Hey, I'm Zealous Sage Plays, and this is the Planet Zoo Oceania Pack. Yes, we are back in San Bernardino Zoo in the Australian area, adding the brand new Tasmanian Devil. I promise you it was a coincidence that I left that space for it just two weeks ago. So our mechanics are busy researching all the new Oceania items in our research center, and we're gonna build a habitat for the Tasmanian Devil using some of the new items like these ones here. There are some really cool new pieces in the Oceania pack, and I cannot wait to get stuck into them. Let's go. We'll start by sizing up the habitat and then clearing a space for our Tasmanian Devils to move into. And while I do that, let me tell you the story about how this episode came to be. So if you are one of my wonderful subscribers, you will know I've spent the past two weeks traveling through Singapore and Bali and I had no idea that um, Frontier were going to be releasing this pack so soon. Uh, I got an email while I was in uh, Bali I think it was or maybe I was still in Singapore at the time announcing the release and the date took me by surprise it was a week earlier than I thought it would be so um, I got back to England about 24 hours ago having traveled for I think 30 hours and I've jumped straight into Planet Zoo to build a habitat for the Tasmanian Devils now I actually just saw Tasmanian Devils at the night safari in Singapore it was the first time I'd ever seen them um, despite the fact that it was a nocturnal zoo um, I was looking at them at about 9 p.m., long after dark in that part of the world. All four of them were asleep, <laughs> of course. Um, they do get up in the day and during the night, although they're mainly nocturnal. So we're gonna be building them a standard outdoor enclosure here. It is gonna be based on the night safari habitat that I've just seen, and also a zoo in Australia uh, called the Unzoo, I think, which has viewing domes, because obviously we have to use the new viewing domes for this habitat. I want to take advantage of the theme of the Oceania pack, get some of the new pieces in here. There's a couple that I spotted straight away that I really like, which we're going to be using heavily in this build to give us something um, that we've not really seen before in San Bernardino Zoo. But we're starting with just a simple fence. This is a direct recreation of the mixture of wood and glass that they used to hold them in the night safari that I just saw um, a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to extend this all the way down the path. And that space at the end is going to be their indoor housing. Now I mentioned some of the new pieces, here they are. This one here, this rock, um, sort of collection of rocks, it's volcanic mainly, which is the theme of the, all the new rocks in this pack. But this particular piece is flexicolor, which is great. It means we can get it to a much lighter, uh, friendlier color that we're gonna use to produce the walls of the habitat and the indoor shelter as well. And it's a fairly small piece, so I'm gonna put some more of the normal rocks at the bottom of it to set it into the ground. And then we're gonna get um, probably three of these on top of each other um, to get the right height. And this will keep the, uh, keep the devils inside the habitat. It's so good to have a new option to build walls that's actually three-dimensional rather than being sort of a texture on a flat plane or the stalactites and faux rocks that we've been using for so long. This is a really nice piece and the way the stones are actually uh, three-dimensional makes a huge difference. I really like these. Each side is different as well. So with a bit of copying and pasting and spinning, we can get some fairly sizable walls here without having any repeating patterns on it. And the fact that it's flexi color is the icing on the cake. Uh, you can sort of see the joins, so I'm going to use the other rock piece, which is smaller. Um, you can see it in its uh, natural colour, um, which is more of a sort of a lava rock. Um, but we'll change that and sink a few of these in just to cover up the joins between the bigger rocks and get a nice smooth look. There's a whole new set of rocks in this pack, the lava rocks. I think it's the first new set of rocks we've had since, I don't know, the Australia pack maybe? A very long time. Um, and I really want to use them. When I was in Bali, I went to a beach, uh, a black sand beach, which is all uh, volcanic rocks. And it just looks so cool. I really want to try and do something uh, with that here. Um, but we are fairly short on um, beachy animals <laughs> in Planet Zoo. So I'm not sure um, if I'll find somewhere to use them. Maybe um, somewhere appropriate will turn up, but I definitely want to use those somewhere. I've dropped a few plants onto the wall to make it look a bit more interesting. I'm pretty happy with that as one sort of building block, which we can use and modify. So let's move on and get some more features into the habitat. What I want is a little stream running through it. Um, just a tiny one, just to give the Tasmanian Devils um, the ability to go into it. Uh, they do like water in real life from uh, what I've researched. So I want somewhere for them to be able to splash about in, in the habitat. 
And once we've done that, it's time to move on to something I'm sure you're as excited about as I am, which is the viewing domes. We're gonna place our first ever viewing dome into a habitat. They are pretty sizable as always in Planet Zoo, but they do look really good and all the um, separate parts of it are flexi color as well. So you don't just have to have this in the middle of the habitat, you can customize it and then you place the entrance for the guests to get into it. Now this is absolutely massive. Um, I've had, like I say, like just a couple of hours to look at this. So um, I don't know if there's another option, but um, I feel like this would be way better if it was like a spawning pad rather than this huge archway. But I'm gonna hide it in the um, indoor shelter for the animals. So you won't really see it in the build. And now it's time for Franchise Masters. So I've shown you before a simple technique for making circular objects. Today I'm gonna to show you the slightly more complex but much more accurate one, the African mud pillar technique. So what we do is place one of the African mud pillars in the center of where we wanna build. And then we take the piece that we wanna actually use to build, make sure it's in the same group and position it where we want it to be. Then select both the items and use Control D to duplicate them and hit Z a couple of times to spin them round. And then delete the second mud pillar that that's just created. Then you've got them in one group, you can just select all of them and start spinning them and they will spin perfectly on the axis of the mud pillar in the middle until you get an arrangement like this. And then you can simply go into each one of the groups and delete the mud pillar from each one until you are left with a perfect circle. You can see mine was slightly off center here. So we're gonna select them all. We need them all in one group anyway, and then just move it until it's exactly over the viewing dome. And then we're gonna recolor the rocks so that they match the walls that we were building. And that's the viewing dome in. Now, speaking of the wall, let's get back to that and start turning that into a proper perimeter wall for the habitat. So we're gonna take the first section that we made, copy it and then rotate it slightly just so we get a little bit of a curve on it. And then we're going to get that into the right position and then make some changes to it because we don't want a repeating pattern all the way around the back of the habitat and that is not gonna look good. So we'll take this vine here and just move it slightly so it uh, looks a little different for the one next to it. And we'll delete that vine there and put in one of the new plants. Um, all the new plants, as far as I can tell, are from New Zealand, uh, which is great because we don't have any representation of New Zealand in the game. Um, so they're not ideal for a Tasmanian habitat, but I just couldn't resist putting some new ones in. So I've used a few of the more generic looking ones throughout this, uh, this habitat. And then we'll copy it a third time and again, put something new on it and delete a few bits. And now we've got one solid block of wall that looks really nice and doesn't have any sort of repeating patterns on it that you really notice, which is important to make sure it looks good in the end, because we're gonna be using this a lot. So we've got that one section of wall there made out of three pieces. We're gonna put that all into one group, and then we can simply copy this around the back of the habitat and rotate it to cover up all the null barriers and make sure that it's in the right place to keep the Tasmanian devils inside the habitat. This is the habitat gate. Check out the new path. That's a volcanic rock sand path. We'll be using that uh, for the entrance to the viewing dome a bit later on, but I really like that new path. Gonna be using that a lot, I think. And we'll just clear out some wall around the habitat gate so we can see it, uh, get the walls around that and around the viewing dome so we get a nice seamless look to everything. There you go. You can see the new path a lot better there. I really like that. Now you may have guessed, but this is not the intended first episode of series two of San Bernardino Zoo. Uh, that was coming out this Saturday. Um, I will do everything I can for that to still be the case, but there may have to be a week without an episode because I am on such a tight schedule this week. It is insane. But I've got a lot of plans from going through Singapore Zoo, Bird Paradise, the Night Safari and River Wonders. Um, they were such amazing zoos. I've taken so much inspiration from them and I've got all sorts of improvements that I wanna to make to San Bernardino Zoo, which is gonna be episode one of the new series. Um, we're gonna be changing things all over the zoo. I cannot wait to get stuck into that. And then as promised in the Australia tour, we will then start building Africa, the big centerpiece to the zoo. So keep your eye on the community channels and the Discord. Um, I will let you know the state of play a bit later on in the week as to whether I can get a new episode out this Saturday or not. Um, but I really wanted to get in and I take a look at the new pack and get an early access video for the Tasmanian Devil done. So some of my building time has been taken up with this, but I'm really happy with how this habitat turns out. Um, we're gonna do a bit more work on their indoor quarters now. The door for the animals and the keepers will be in the center here between these two walls. I'm gonna use one of the PVC strip doors for that. And then there's gonna be viewing for the guests here. So we're gonna edit this wall, 
get rid of a few bits and then move these bottom bits downwards and then we're going to get some glass in here so that the guests can look at their indoor quarters as well so simply move the null barriers so they're exactly in the middle of these um, bits of stone and then change that one piece of null barrier to glass that gets the job done and then we'll put in the PVC door I mentioned as well so that the devils and the keepers can get in and out of the inside area and then we're going to move on and do some work on the entrance to the viewing dome. So I've used an archway from the Twilight Pack here. The brickwork's pretty similar to these new rocks. Uh, we just need to change the colours and then that will sit in pretty nicely there. And it just makes the entrance look less huge and imposing than it did before. There we go. Got a little sign in there as well to tell the guests where to go. Uh, that needs improving. We'll do that later. And then it's onto the inside of the habitat. We're going to get all the terrain painting and the planting done. This is all coarse sand at the moment, so we're going to put some more fine sand in for variety. And then I want some long grass at the back as well. And just work on getting different areas of the habitat and a much more um, interesting look. Got some new plants in there already and the canoe as well. I thought that was a cute little addition to the little stream. And it's time for another new piece. This is the canoe sail, which I thought would work really nicely for a shelter. We're quite short on fabrics and things like that in this game. So I wanted to see if I could make a nice um, shelter or a cover rather for the viewing so that it reduces glare on the glass and it gives a bit of shade to the visitors when they're, when they're looking at that, keep them out of the California sunshine. So we're gonna use um, five of these pieces all arranged so they form a sort of continuous piece of fabric with these struts in it as well and get a really nice looking um, shade for the guests here. There was a lot of shade covers on the paths in Singapore Zoo and, and all the zoos in Singapore really that I went to um, because of the temperatures there and obviously Southern California where San Bernardino Zoo is is pretty hot as well so I'm trying to incorporate more of this kind of thing into the zoo now to make it more realistic. Speaking of Singapore Zoo, once I found the time to edit the hours of footage I took across the four zoos in the Mandai Wildlife Reserve there, I will be releasing a tour video. Looking forward to getting that out. All four of the zoos were as incredible as I was expecting them to be um, and obviously there's quite a few things that have directly influenced San Bernardino Zoo in there so I think you guys will enjoy seeing um, the sort of IRL versions of these habitats. Let's move on to the final part of this build we're just making some improvements to the roof I want to get a bio roof on in here as we have done throughout much of this zoo so it's got that kind of Australian feel from the ground level and then a much more modern look from up above and that's pretty much the habitat done. Let's check out our first Oceania pack animals, the Tasmanian Devils. We have waited so long for these guys to be added into the game and believe me, they do not disappoint. The model is amazing. I've had so little time to spend with them. What I've seen though, the animation is really cool as well. Their interactions with the scratching posts are very cool indeed. And they look great just wandering around. The new animals are always so good in this game. Let's check out the viewing dome. We've got some guests coming towards the entrance here. There we go. That is so cool. Really happy we finally got these in there. I wanted viewing domes in the meerkat habitat that we built. I spent so long trying to make them using the handful of curved glass pieces that we've got. I couldn't make anything that wasn't absolutely enormous and looked ridiculous. So I'm really happy we finally got these in. And they are as feisty as you would expect, as you can see. This is the whole habitat. I think it sits really nicely alongside this path, a nice bit of variety to our Australian area. This is where we started today, and this is where we are now. An unexpected addition, but a very pleasing one. I will see you again soon for the next episode of San Bernardino Zoo. Enjoy the Oceania pack, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.